Hi, and thanks for tuning in today for this week's Connect video, Tuesday, April 5th, and uh, we're approaching the Easter season, and hope you're having a, a great day and a great start to your week. A couple things to take note of. First of all, I know this is way out there in a sense, but save the date. October 22nd this year is our annual fall festival, and... Um, so we, we talked about that a little bit this past Sunday with Chris Wilsterman going over a few details on that. And thank you for those who did uh, sign up in some of those key roles that we were needing to, uh, to fill. Awesome opportunity for us as a church just to love on the community and to be a blessing to them. Uh, so that comes up, once again, October 22nd. Try and plan uh, for you to be here and to serve in some capacity, we need 240-something people, I think, is what Chris said, uh, to pull this event off. So, Also, hey, last night, what a great evening with uh, Blessed Beginnings of Oro Valley, our uh, preschool here. Uh, they had their first annual spring sing, and uh, the kids did a great job. Over 250 people were here parents and grandparents and all that kind of stuff so great night of the kids singing a few songs and then uh, a meal just uh, it was a gorgeous night my goodness what a beautiful night but a great job to Callie and her entire team and uh, thank you for all to all the families just supporting that and coming out and having a good evening um, and as I mentioned right at the beginning we're approaching the Easter season so hey our Easter services are coming up this coming Sunday is our Easter choir program. And um, what a great ministry they always do, presenting the gospel and leading us in a time of worship with that through song. Uh, Good Friday services, or service, excuse me, Good Friday service, 7 p.m. on Good Friday. We also have the crosses in the courtyard uh, on that evening, which is our tradition. So please make it a point to be there. We will have communion uh, in the Good Friday service. And then our Easter celebration, Sunday morning, Easter, Easter Sunday, 9.30 uh, or 11 o'clock are the worship times. And uh, the Easter brunch will be in full swing outside on the uh, grass, in the gra grassy area. And um, just a great time of celebration. So make sure you're inviting family, friends, neighbors, coworkers. Uh, make sure you grab some of those invite cards and just invite them to one of these services. And uh, it's a great way for them to kind of encounter Christ. Maybe that's not something they typically do around Easter. So a great opportunity for you to invite someone and begin that spiritual dialogue with them. Hey, today I want to talk about um, a subject. I came across an article uh, last week by James Emery White and uh, hit a nerve with me because it's something that I, I kind of encounter or, or deal with as a pastor. And that is, um, how, how, how do you interpret the Bible? How hard or how easy is it to interpret the Bible? Some people really struggle with this, and they kind of have a sense that, uh, well, the Bible is what it means to you. Or they have a sense that it's just really hard to interpret, to understand what the Bible's talking about. And I just want to take a few moments here and uh, kind of dispel those two myths, if you will. Um, biblical interpretation is actually um, not something that's subjective up to each person to kind of figure out for themselves. It's, it's a science, actually. And the branch of science is called hermeneutics, is the big fancy word. According to Merriam-Webster, hermeneutics is the study of the methodological principles of interpretation and as of the Bible. It's typically used in regard to interpreting Scripture uh, in seminary, or even if you go to Bible college, you'll probably have a class in hermeneutics. Um, and it's a very deliberate uh, and also, I would say, literal process that accounts for figures of speech and metaphorical language and all those kinds of things. But it's a pretty straightforward thing. And, and most of the Bible is very, very straightforward. It's not hard to understand, to interpret what it says. And let's walk through a few examples, if you will. I think I've got four of them here, four, I think. Um, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. 
in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now think about that. Is, is that an unclear statement in any way? Is that hard to interpret what the meaning of that is? No. Now you may wonder, well, what's, what's in the beginning? Um, and, and the sense of time and all that. Okay, yeah, you got those things, but it's clear, right? In the beginning, whenever that was, it was God who created the heavens and the earth. It's as simple as that. The next passage, Exodus 20, verse 13 to 15, parts of the Ten Commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. All right? Now think about those. Any ambiguity there? Is the statement unclear in any one of those three statements? You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. I think it's pretty easy to understand, and anyone can interpret it. It's very simple. Romans 6, verse 9. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. All right? So according to that passage, did Christ ra- get risen? Was he, is he risen from the dead? Was he raised from the dead? Yes. It's very, it says it very plainly. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. All right? It's, it's, it's not hard to interpret what that passage is meaning. And we look at Acts 1.11. This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Is Jesus coming back? Yes, absolutely, because it's very clear. The passage doesn't leave you wondering, well, is he coming back, really? Is this some sort of, uh, you know, metaphysical thing? No. Same way he went up, he will come back. Very clear, right? So most of the Bible, maybe even 98% of the Bible, are statements that clear. Now, where we struggle with is sometimes we don't like what it says. And so we try and come up with ways to interpret it that aren't as direct, if you will. James Emery White in his article says this, quote, it's interesting how when you don't like something you read, you can suddenly find yourself having a hard time understanding, close quote. <laughs> Which is true, right? We, we struggle with the passages that we don't like necessarily. But the Bible is very clear, and the process of interpretation, hermeneutics, is a scientific process that has certain specific steps to follow. I mean, understand it this way. When you or I write something, if we write an email or we write a letter, (laughs) anyone who still does that, right? Um, You mean something by what you're writing. There's a specific thing or, or, um, uh, you know, feeling or whatever you're trying to communicate in what you're writing. And it's not up to the reader to come up with whatever they think you're meaning. It's up to them to figure out what did they mean? What did Steve mean when he wrote me this? What what does it mean when he said this? That's the question. One of the questions that really bothers me as a as a pastor um, is you'll hear every once in a while someone say a Bible study or a discussion group or something. Well, what does the passage mean to you? What is that passage saying to you? And I just want to call time out and blow the whistle and say, you know, throw the flag. Because that's, no, stop. That's not the question to ever ask in a Bible study. All right? It's it's not, what is it saying to me? Because that then leaves it up to each individual person to come up with their own interpretation that's custom made for them. And that's not, the, that's not hermeneutics. That's not biblical interpretation. It's not interpretation of something that I write to, to someone else. That they just kind of come up with whatever meaning they want. I'm meaning a specific thing when I write, when I say something. The right question is, what did the author mean when they wrote that? What's the original intent of the author? And that's the meaning of it. And that's what the process of biblical interpretation of hermeneutics helps you arrive at. Mark Twain has a famous quote, right? 
It's not the parts of the Bible I don't understand that disturb me. Rather, it's the parts of the Bible that I do understand that disturb me. (laughs) Well, I hope um, as you read Scripture and as you hear sermons, um, I hope you can understand better, maybe, interpret better what the Bible is saying. It's very clear in most of its uh, most of its content. There's a few st- tough passages to understand, um, and it is a, a book written in a long time ago in different cultures and era and everything else. So yeah, there's a, some some challenges there at times, but most of the time it's really straightforward. It's simple communication. Are we willing to take God at His word? I think that's where it boils down to, right? Can I pray for us? Father, help us as we read your word to us, as we hear sermons and hear your word read in services and so on. May we understand that our goal is to try and figure out what you mean. What did the author mean? What did the author intend to say here? And then may we accept what it says. And if it's a struggle for us, may we not come up with a new creative way to understand the passage, but may we submit to your truth through the power of your your spirit in us, may we submit to your word to us. It is your loving word, and may we understand that always. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, hope you have an awesome week. Hope you uh, are able to join us this coming Sunday, Palm Sunday, for the adult Easter program, and then Good Friday, and then Easter morning celebrations, everything else. But this Sunday, Good Friday, the, the adult choir Easter program, it'll be a huge blessing, and I hope you're a blessing this week. And we'll see you this Sunday. Bye-bye.